Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. <laughs> and you are going in SmackDown Live. Who needs Raw? What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, the legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. And you are tuned in to Going In Raw right now. How you doing? Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. And also available wherever fine podcasts are, including iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and SoundCloud.com forward slash Steve and Larson. And hopefully soon to be at... Spotify. Spotify. Yeah, that's right. Spotify. We're on the road to Spotify, Larson. Yes. Anyways, we're just coming off a very, very confusing SmackDown Live. Well, I mean, it wasn't confusing. We knew what happened. It was easy to follow what happened. His motivation behind some of the things that happened is kind of nebulous. Uh, we're also at Patreon, patreon.com, <laughs> forward slash Stephen Larson, uh, and uh, Pro Wrestling Tees. Forward slash going in wrong. Um, so let's, let's do uh, a kind of... What I said was... I feel like we got the 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 end of the second act without the second act. Kind of. I feel like Bray Orton, we got the entire first act, skipped the second act, and and we just got the end of the second act. Let me ask you this. Which is kind of pivotal. We need the second Imagine act. Imagine if what happened tonight happened during the go-home show. To Mania? Yeah. Yeah, I know. That'd been awesome. No, I know. It does. Th- we'll start from the beginning of the I show. I know. They, there's a lot of things they have to decide on what they're doing. Well, well, we'll start from the beginning of the show. We got some potentially cool news about AJ Styles. But yeah. But I'll kind of, again, I'll kind of believe that when I see it. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> we'll start from the beginning. Yeah. It started um, off like a normal SmackDown. Yeah. The show opened <laughs> backstage with uh, Shane and Daniel Bryan reviewing the tape <laughs> um, at for the finish of last week's Battle Royal. In they were not comes. reviewing the actual angle that showed AJ Styles' feet hitting first. Well, they never showed that in SmackDown last week. Um, they showed that when... Uh, well, I saw it as a gif on Twitter after the fact. They didn't re-show it. They showed they showed a different angle in this one. They showed like a corner angle. Kind of, but you never saw it. You didn't see anybody's... You don't see the actual feet you hitting. You don't see anybody's feet hit the but, ground. But like, you see... The natural progression of AJ oh, Styles' and you saw, feet. You saw it in what they, you saw that in what they showed today. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, but it was I mean, more it's plainly obvious, obvious that AJ hit first. Anyway, story, anyway, storyline wise, yeah, they AJ couldn't comes it in, out. And, yeah, AJ comes in, says, you know, you can see plainly yeah. that Harper's feet hit first. Mm. You don't have to do this match anymore. Just put me in the main event at WrestleMania, which I'm all for. Yeah, yeah. but you know, Daniel Bryan and Shane say no. AJ Styles starts talking trash about Luke Harper in walks Luke Harper. Right. Uh, and so, anyways, they have a match set up, which should have been probably the main event. Um, but it was announced later on and said our main event was going to be a Bray Wyatt invocation. Yes. Yeah. Um, which got me to thinking, what, what is an invocation? Am I stupid? What is an invocation? You're I not, asked you, you're not and you stupid, said, Steve. I don't know what the fuck it is. But when you told me what it, what it meant, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Now I know. Yeah, you're invoking, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so. That led to this was actually wildly entertaining. The Miz, yeah, it really was. The Miz TV with John Cena. The Miz started running down John Cena, and I like that what he did, what the Miz did. He said, "Okay, Cena, you're out here. Cut his mic right away, because mm-hmm. so often someone will do a promo and Cena will cut them off." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the Miz and then just laid into Cena for a good seven minutes. Yeah, it was a while, and all Cena could do was the Yano. And anyways, Miz covered some familiar territory in terms of John Cena being a part-timer, Miz being there all the time. Cena burying people. Mm-hmm. It's a pulling strings backstage. Yeah, being manipulative backstage yeah. to, to get the upper hand, get title shots. He had his own invocation. He invoked the time when he was the world champion mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. defeated uh, John Cena Good job. At, at WrestleMania. This was the Miz invocation. Yeah. Um, and beat John Cena at WrestleMania. <laughs> and then several weeks later, John Cena... 
Cena pulled some strings and uh, arranged for a triple threat. I think Helena? No, it was, no, it was a cage, it was a cage match. match. The one with Morrison in it, right? With Mundo in it, yeah. Yeah. And uh, John Cena got that title back. Yeah. Um, so anyways, after that, John Cena got his microphone turned back on. And who boy. Blistering. He laid into the Miz. Blistering. Big time. I mean, shit. He was saying things like, well, he said, you're a shell of a superstar. And guys like you always complain about guys like me because you can't get past a certain level. Well, and he said, you, the Miz, he said, you stole... Chris Jericho's Ooh, personality. Yeah. He accused you him of stole, gimmick infringement. You stole Ric Flair's figure four. Mm-hmm. And then you stole Daniel Bryan's moves and yeah. personality. Yeah. And uh, The Miz literally looked like he wanted to cry. Yeah, pretty much. He looked like he just got ripped a new one. Uh, so then when John Cena was done spitting hot fire. And about to leave. And about to leave, Marie said, hold on, John Cena. <laughs> you do not leave me now. I tell you when to leave. And listen to me now. You're a bad person. <laughs> you are not good. And then she slaps his face. And John Cena, Cena looked said, like, you just made the worst mistake of your life or something like that. It looked like he was going to AA the fuck out of Maurice. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. But then instead. But uh, instead, John Cena's stripper girlfriend, uh, oh Nikki Bella, comes down. I, dude, I'm sorry. I can't. Whenever she comes out and she does that little stripper dance, I can't help but think, oh. man, she's got a stripper butt. Like, she is totally stripper. <laughs> I, I'm, she, got, she wears, like, every week. It's like no, her I know, get I know smaller and smaller. Saying. I know what you're saying. Anyways, I'm just clowning around. I Nikki know you Bella are. is not a proper stripper. Um, <laughs> she's an executive producer on a reality show, and she does a very good job at that. Yes. So Nikki comes out. Yeah. She um, comes running out. Yeah. Man, the Miz bouncing and, all over the, the place. The Miz and Maurice flee the ring. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, no. Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, they and, and then Nikki says something about... What did she say? She called Maurice a bitch. Yeah. She said, bitch. Yeah. Get out of my ring. And literally, that segment was 20 minutes long. Yeah, Maurice and Maurice. It was very entertaining. It was. Maurice, you don't to be in my ring now. You stand away from me. I mean, when I first heard about this match happening, the Cena... Uh, it sounded stupid. Yeah, it sounded not like it sounded something like I wanted to see. a celebrity match without celebrities. I know, but then after this promo, I was like... Okay. Okay. I'm I'm cool that they're gonna let now Nikki... if they can maintain this momentum mm-hmm. for another four weeks. I just want more cursing. I, Nikki should have said, "Get the fuck out of my ring, bitch!" Yeah, and then drop the c word. Oh Ooh, my oof. goodness! Can't gracious. do that. <laughs> yeah, man. I wanted to be. I want that match to be uh, verbally like uh, Gorillas of Destiny uh, at Wrestle Kingdom. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> Eat shit! Ow! <laughs> fuck you! That's what I want. Um, and as stiff as that, too. You know, I'm looking at this rundown of the show here, and the first half of the show, was actually, most of the show was pretty good. Yeah, no, it was a good show. Look, this show had us guessing. It had us laughing. It had us, like... Perplexed. Perplexed. It had us hurting because of this Dolph Apollo oh, uh, yeah. chairs match. Yeah. And a nut shot there and a throat shot. It was a very, very crazy SmackDown. Yeah, it was. Next was uh, Becky Lynch versus Mickey James in oh. the best out of two or three oh. falls match. We forgot to mention, too, Tom Phillips confirmed has a job still. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, Cannon Grant was on Twitter. Uh, he was saying, it's been 24 minutes and Morrow hasn't said anything yet. I'm going to get a Snapchat from Cannon Grant tonight <laughs> He's saying, doing that exact thing. But, uh, yeah, Morrow didn't talk. Like It was all Tom Phillips until an actual mat, until actual match stuff started. That's the way things have been going for a while. That's right. Um, so, anyways, yeah, we got a Becky Lynch, Mickey James, best two out of three falls. Ooh, uh, Mickey got the first pin with a DDT, nasty-looking DDT. Yeah. Um, and then Becky got a pin with a roll-up. Following, like, a, a failed top rope maneuver from yeah, yeah, Mickey yeah, James, yeah. right? Alexa Bliss comes out. Yeah. Um, to try to get involved. Becky uh, gets Mickey James in the disarm her. Yeah, it looks like she's got an erection. Yeah. Uh, Mickey taps. Yeah. Becky wins. Boom, end of match. Blow off done. Um, yeah, that seems to be the case. Yeah, I would think so. I would think Naomi being hurt and giving up that title simply means we're going to get Becky versus Alexa Bliss at WrestleMania. Assuming Naomi isn't healthy in time. Yeah, I don't think I think they're going to want Becky Lynch in a high profile role. There. Oh, yeah. I think maybe. that's going to be the case. 
Um, let's see here. Then we had um, a Luke Harper promo talking about his upcoming match. With and AJ and his motivation for going after Bray Wyatt. Good promo. Luke I'm Harper no has been doing... I'm longer scared of you. Luke Harper's been doing fantastic work. And then... Oh, absolutely. And it looks great. After that, we had Bray Wyatt um, saying... Uh, Again, kind of con- reconfirming mm-hmm. the bond yeah. between he, Bray yeah. Wyatt, yeah. and Randy Orton. Randy Orton, baby. Uh, then we had Alexa Bliss backstage. She's being interviewed by Interview Bot, and she made a, a couple of wise cracks about the Oscars. Yeah, and uh, and then Natalia comes up. Yeah, that was confusing. That was weird because I'm like, whose face? Who's heel? There is no face. It seemed there like no heel. Yeah, it seemed like <laughs> it seemed like they were trying to out heal each other. <laughs> it did. It did. Uh, and so I don't know what the gist of that was. Natalia was saying we're both good. We're both champions. Champion level competitors. Yeah. And Lex was sort of like, like insinuating, insinuating that Natalia wants a title shot. Yeah. Um, so we'll see if that happens. Maybe it'll just be like a two week feud. I mean, an AJ Styles interview. At this point, I think I was chasing Gypsy out of the room or something because she started It barking. was short. It was right before the match and he. Didn't really say much. So then with an hour left in the show, we had Luke Harper versus AJ Styles. What we thought was going to be the main event. Which, you know, because it, it should have been the main event. And then we got to thinking, okay, well, there might be some shenanigans here. Yeah, something screwy might happen and then at the at finish. The end and then of the they'll, show. they'll start the match over like they did on uh, Raw weeks and weeks ago mm-hmm. when it was Charlotte and Sasha. Right, right. And they kind of did that. Um, Harper, uh, AJ went for it was it was a good match. It was really it was a physical match. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it was a good match. Another great showing from Harper. The crowd was really behind Luke Harper. It was about oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know if it was fifty fifty, but there was countering. It was let's fairly go, fifty. Let's yeah. go Harper. Let's yeah. go AJ. Chance. Yeah, people love both these guys. Yeah. Uh, so uh, AJ Styles hits a phenomenal forearm, pins Harper. Harper gets his foot on the ropes, but the ref doesn't see it. Counts to three. Shane comes out, restarts the match. As if he was expecting that to happen. Right, yeah. He comes out immediately. Yeah, it was weird. And then uh, AJ got the win anyways. Yeah, there was a... So AJ goes down uh, to ringside after uh, Shane restarts the match, gets in his face. That's right. Um, Luke Harper comes out um, and starts to deliver a kick. Yeah. Aimed, I'm guessing, at AJ's back. Yeah. AJ, AJ moves. moves, and so Shane gets kicked right in the elbow. <laughs> and sells it like a chain. I don't like know if he, he had to sell anything. There was some <laughs> force behind that kick. He dropped like a sack of potatoes. It was great. I was like, oh my God, Shane looks legit concussed right there. Because it showed him on the ground. He's like, like freaking Chavo after that Billy Kidman uh, shooting star press. Oh, man. Um, that's still so disturbing. Yeah. Um, so, uh, anyways, the Harper and AJ get back in the ring. AJ ends up with the win. They After announce the, him. Uh, 450. Yeah. Springboard 450 yeah, from splash. Like a long ways away. Yeah. They announce AJ is now headed to the main event of WrestleMania. Very confused because they thought this was going to be a Wyatt family thing. Yeah, that seemed to be the case. So, we'll talk about that more after we get to the invitation. Yeah, because. Well, we'll get to that. There's a, a lot. There's a lot to work out here. Yeah. Then we had a Cena Nikki interview that was crashed by James Ellsworth and Carmella. Um, it was the same old shtick where Carmella prompted Ellsworth to talk some shit. That led to Nikki and Cena coming up with the idea to have a mixed tag match next week. Cena and Nikki versus Ellsworth and Carmella that should be wildly entertaining. Yes. Cena seemed very happy. Um, during this particular segment. Giddy. Oh, and that's another thing that he said during the Miz bit. He said, if I was pulling the strings around oh, here, yeah. I wouldn't be standing in the ring with you. I'd be standing in here with The Undertaker. Ooh, he wow. said, you might not be The Undertaker, Miz, but next week. Or, no, if you keep talking like you are. If you keep are, talking like you are, you're going to be a dead yeah, man. Yeah, John Cena seemed to be in high spirits all night. He really did. In that interview, like I just said, with uh, Ellsworth and Carmella, he was downright giddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. Yeah, he totally was. Um then we got, yeah, I like this feud here. I, I like do too. This. Dean Ambrose came to the ring to talk shit about Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin showed up on the big screen and they had some back and forth. Whoever's, uh, th- whatever writer or producer is involved with this is doing a solid job. This is a solid feud. Yeah, happening. like we were talking about when it was happening. Whoever is helping Baron with his promos is, yeah. is writing to his strength. Yeah, they're doing a really good job with it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty great to see. Um, so I'm interested in that. This is good. Did this set up anything for next week? I don't think so. They have a they have a match at Mania. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I just didn't know if this was gonna like this mm. didn't really elevate things necessarily. No. It was just a lot of bantering back. Yeah, and just forth. some trash talking. Then we had um, technically, I guess, the main event uh, was Apollo Crews versus Dolph Ziggler in a chairs match. It's kind of comical because like they come down, and there's just chairs kind of lying about. Yeah, 
Chairs were milling about in the Chairs ring. Chairs were everywhere. They were milling about. No tag teams this week at all. No. And see how strong SmackDown was without tag teams? They made a huge deal about uh, Chad Gable's homecoming because he went to college in Minnesota. And it was in oh, St. Okay. Paul. Yeah. So I was kind of expecting mm. something. Nothing. Um, and this was actually a pretty decent match. Yeah, it like, was. A lot of stuff looked like it hurt. It was great because Dolph comes down and Apollo Cruz hits X to yeah, he break broke out. out. Yeah, camera. It, it happened exactly like a breakout. Yeah. Camera pans over and Apollo Cruz is lurking behind him. It's too bad Apollo <laughs> didn't scroll over to chair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So he could have run in with the chair already. Exactly. Didn't happen. Um, but this is a pretty brutal match. It was kind of fun. There was a lot of cool moments. Um, Dolph ended up winning because he like he dropped Cruz. On his neck, so his throat, neck, yeah, his yeah, throat yeah. hit the chair, like the back of the chair. And Cruz is doing a really great job selling. I was like, oh, my God, he might really be hurt. I always remember the time that Triple H landed on – no, no, Rob Van Dam landed on Triple H's throat and, like, crushed his whatever, his windpipe larynx. or whatever, larynx or whatever. And, like, he legitimately almost died in the ring because of that. Wow. Yeah, it was a while ago. It was crazy. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah, he was all holding his, his throat through the rest of it. And then Dolph picked them up and landed them on his balls. Yeah. On the back of the chair, on the back of the chair. And then went for the pin at that point. Cruz was like, fuck this man. Um, I was, I was really disappointed that Cruz lost the match. Cruz really should have picked up a win there. I know. I mean, have a really strong showing in a match. I mean, like when he did that spot where he did the, uh, the, uh, the moonsault Mm -hmm. on the Dolph. With the chair on top of him. Mm-hmm. Doing stuff like that will endear him to the crowd. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, Cruz needs wins like this to pick up some momentum. I know. I it, know. It, and it's just small things like this. Like, Dolph would have been totally fine. Yeah. Totally fine if he picked up a loss here. Dolph, yeah. Dolph can eat a million pins. And it oh, yeah. Matter. He'd be it won't matter at all. Same status right now. I mean, especially after the, uh, the, the spot where Cruz's throat hit the chair. Mm-hmm. Have him come back from that. Yeah, I know. I Struggle know. to pick up the win. I know. He seemed very content to be bidding to, to be pinned at that point, though. He was like, oh, my balls and my throat. I know, but fucking pin me. have Cruz overcome the odds, pick up the win, get some momentum. He needs it at some point. I right? know. He's got yeah. tons of talent. Maybe in next week's wild card finals. I don't think next week is a wild card I don't think finals. so either, yeah. no. Uh, so anyways, that led us to the Bray Wyatt invocation. Yeah. So, so Bray Wyatt shows up. And he starts delivering a promo on AJ Styles saying that you're going to meet Beelzebub. Yeah, he pretty it? much said he was a devil. Pretty much said he was a devil. And inferred that Randy Orton was currently in hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they cut to the, the Titan Tron, and there's yeah. Randy in the shed we've seen often in the Wyatt mm-hmm. package, video yeah, packages. Yeah, yeah. With the, the rocking chair rocking by itself. Bray seems quite happy to see him. He says, oh, Randy, baby, Randy Orton. Goo, goo, gaga, baby. What are you doing in my house? I told you not to get in there. I thought I put up the baby proof. The baby gate. The baby gate, Randy Orton. So anyways, Randy Orton then proceeds to unveil his his his, his card. He, his he, grand plan. He yes. shows his cards, if yes. you will. And he says, Sister Abigail is buried under me. She's under here. She died a long time ago. Don't know how I figured that out. Uh, he says, I'm going to dig her up or something. It got really dark. Yeah, but he, the gist of it was that he was going to dig up Sister Abigail so that Bray would lose his powers. And he and said... He had a, a pickaxe. Yeah, yeah. And he was, he reiterated, this is my plan. You thought I was with you. I was not. Uh-uh. He said, I said... If you can't, if you beat, can't beat, beat him, him join him, him, but instead find the right time to screw him. I'm thinking to myself, did I miss five weeks of SmackDown to lead to this moment? Two weeks, and then he proceeds to to douse the, the cabin on fire. He yeah, goes he drops outside. the pickaxe after yeah. saying several times that he was going to dig up right. Sister Abigail. He didn't actually do that. Throws it. Pours gasoline all over the inside of the cabin, over the chair. Right. The spot under the chair what, where the, the baseboards were taken off, the ground exposed. He soaks that in gasoline. Right. Goes to the outside of the shed, puts gasoline over that, does a trail of gasoline leading to where he stands, lights a match. Mm-hmm. And as it burns, like almost all the way down, throws it on the ground. Trail of gas and why is just in in tears. And, yeah, and, and they they do a lot out. of quick cuts back and forth between Randy like reveling in yeah. what he just did and Bray going basically insane. 
bashing you, you his head against the announce during table. That, you said, is this a Bray Wyatt face turn? Were you joking or not? No. Because what Randy Orton did was a horrible, horrible heel thing to do. Yes. Yeah. But then, then at the end, they had the crowd chanting Randy. I'm not sure if that was real. Is that was that supposed to be uh, something in Bray in Bray's head? Maybe, or was that supposed? Were they trying? Because you're right, it sounded totally uh, piped because in. because the volume totally piped in. If it sounded piped in, because the volume like went up at a consistent <laughs> level, it went it started quiet and then slowly raised up, not like organically like chance would start. So let's walk through this and try to find the logic. Two weeks ago, Randy Orton says. I won't face you at WrestleMania. I won't face you at WrestleMania. I am now the student. You're the master. So, okay, his spot's open. They do a battle royal. Now we get AJ Styles this week as the clear winner of that number one contender shot at WrestleMania. R- 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 Randy, during his uh, burning down the place, said, I'm going to face you at WrestleMania. Yes. So he is going to face him at WrestleMania. Why now? Remember last week after the Battle Royal with the the, the dusty finish? Mm-hmm. That the reason they did that was because they weren't sure what direction they wanted to go necessarily? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So maybe once they decided that Harper wasn't going to be in the match at Mania, mm-hmm. they just decided, okay, let's start Orton Wyatt right now. Right. Like start that build up right now. Just so there's heat going into their match at Mania. But, you know, where does AJ fit into that? Yeah. I mean, I think I said a couple weeks ago, maybe they'll do Orton AJ first. Winner that faces Bray. Or maybe if they still want to do AJ Shane, Shane will come in and say, okay, well, Orton says he wants a shot back. So, sorry, AJ. Uh, Yeah, I would have a really hard time. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him. We're in this sort of bizarro land where, like, what the face does is, like, or, like, what the, what, uh, heel actions are attributed to faces like Shane and Daniel Bryan are inexplicably treating AJ like an asshole. I know. And it's like, I get that AJ is supposed to be uh, an arrogant prick, but all of his points are completely valid. Oh yeah. The way John Cena talks about AJ styles in their buildup, he was totally being a prick, mm-hmm. but AJ was supposed to be the heel still. Yeah. So we're, we, I get that we're in bizarro land. It's like, Oh no, they're telling us that he's a face so he can do whatever the fuck he wants. And he's still a face. Like yeah. they're telling us what you know. Um, I just, I, I, th- th- this is, it's, it's far too sudden. You see, you just said build up. We'll start the build up to Bray Orton. Now I know you meant literally the match. Yeah, not not the the, the build up to, to yeah. them disbanding. I know. Yeah, but th- there there needs to be a proper build. I agree. Like, like there, I said, imagine there's no in between here. Imagine if this the go home show, SmackDown go home show for Mania, this kicked off the show. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That'd be insane. Yeah. And they saw the rest of the episode to to find out what to do with AJ and Orton and Wyatt. Mm-hmm. And that would make for a good story for the whole two hour show. The entire show, yeah, I know. I mean, I, I understand what they did at the end of the show because people talking all week and people are excited to see what's gonna happen next week on SmackDown because there's so much up in the air. Well, I just don't like that Randy Orton said, I don't, I'm not going to face you at WrestleMania. There was nothing in between. I know. it felt it, this, this whole thing as it exists now feels overwritten for no reason. Like, if uh, here's my thing. Here is my thing. If somehow, someway, uh, let's say, okay, so I'm trying to put this together in my head. If Luke Harper... If last week AJ Styles won the Battle Royal, mm-hmm. and if he had been treating my my point, I'm driving home to this. If Randy Orton had showed up on the big screen tonight and or last night, whenever you're you know this aired, yeah, Luke Harper and the the returning Eric Rowan showed up behind him to to fulfill your idea of him taking over the Wyatt family. And they burned down the 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 Wyatt compound. Yeah, that would have made total like last week, right? Uh, well, I mean, it, it, something would have needed to have been in play last week. Yeah, and then this week that happens. Okay, yeah. But like, I wanted I something needs to need to have been, like this whole bringing in the AJ Styles thing just doesn't make any like whoever whoever well, whoever wants this it like feels, it's, it's it feels just, overwritten. 
Yeah, it feel it, well. It feels overwritten. It feels like two people are writing for the same story and they're not in the same room together. Yeah. Because why is AJ Styles involved in this when there's drama between Orton and, and Bray? Why? Why is AJ Styles involved in this? Why was that a necessity? Why? Why did that even happen? I don't know. Because this whole Orton Bray thing could have just gone on its own. Orton Orton wins the Royal Rumble. Bray comes out to celebrate with him. Orton gives an RKO yeah. next the next week. Bray says, you know, brother Randy, why did you do that to me? It hurt, you know? Yeah. And Orton says, I'm the, you know, I am the student. I don't, and then maybe Bray sends Harper and Rowan after Orton and they walk away from Bray from his orders. And they slowly be, then you have like a couple of weeks maybe to get them over to Randy. Yeah, he summons them to him. It's yeah. like a it's like a Bray and you know the the muscle is with Harper and Rowan. Yeah, and it's about controlling people. And so if you have a situation where you know it's like uh, whose dog is it? Let's put him down in the middle of the street. I'll stand over here. You stand over there and see where they go. Yeah. Who has the power? Who has the yeah. control? And puppies uh, Harper and Rowan go to Randy Orton in unison. Then Randy has the power. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Why is AJ Styles oddly in this? And why do I get the feeling that Shane McMahon is simply out to screw AJ Styles out of a title shot just because he doesn't happen to like AJ Styles attitude? I know when AJ Styles clearly is the best wrestler on your roster. I know puts on the best matches Gets a huge pop every time out. I just, I don't get it. And it it seems like what we're getting is simply back to Orton being face Orton via being a ruthless asshole. You know what I mean? Like people are going to cheer. People are going to cheer Randy. They cheered him burning down a man's house. If the, if we're to believe the WWE anyways, I think the actual people in attendance are probably kind of torn about who to chief for. Yeah. Everybody loves Bray Wyatt. Yeah. People love him. They yeah. want him to be champion. He, I think so far he's been a killer champion. Oh, yeah. um, Because he's taking it seriously. Mm-hmm. I just don't get, like, why they think people, like, if they're piping in the Randy chance, it's one thing if that's, if that's going to be in Bray's head. Yeah. If it's like a subjective point of view yeah. type thing. Yeah. But Bray is such a Bray talks about being a god. Wouldn't he no sell like somebody bringing down his house? Well, it's not the house. It's it's Sister Abigail. It's Sister Abigail, where, but what Randy said was a source of his power. He says, I'm gonna burn the spirit of Sister Abigail. Why well, do you burn a spirit? Like I know in Ghostbusters land you have your backpack and you shoot them with the ectoplasm. It's a proton shit. pack. A proton yeah. pack. Ectoplasm yeah, exactly. with the ghost yeah. emit. That's what they do. And so but I, I just, I mean, I get like he's burning the symbol of Sister Abigail or that's, you know, that property is where his powers emanate from. I just, I don't, I don't know, man. I feel like, and he even said some shit about stripping Bray's, you know, whatever. I get, I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I feel like there's a big, I hate to say this is a cop out. feels like. You know, like if you're writing a story or something, I don't know the last time you wrote was, but you know, I know you and I both get story ideas in our head from time to time. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you have like a really killer ending and it's like, man, how do I, how do I plot oh, yeah. out a oh, really, yeah. really interesting path to that? Yeah. I feel like they just copped out on that interesting path. Could be. Because I can, I'm honestly so perplexed by what I just saw. I'm like, okay, I feel like I have a really cool ending that I totally got, I got I got uh, 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 gypped out of the the, the, the actual story, the yeah. build up to yeah. it. You know, I want the twists and turns. We didn't get any of that. I yeah. didn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, okay, th- this was a very very cool sort of uh, like I said, end of the second act. You know, yeah. like this is we we got our first act. We missed the entirety of the second act. We saw the very end of it though, mm-hmm. and now we get to see the 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 rest and the climax of that mania. Yeah. No, I agree. I just don't know. I would love to think that with SmackDown being as interesting as it has been in the past, we're going to get some interesting twists and turns with this AJ thing. If it's just going to lead to like AJ Styles tonight, we're uh, what, four weeks out, five weeks out from Mania. Four weeks out. Four weeks out from Mania. Almost a month. They have declared that AJ Styles is going to WrestleMania. 
if that somehow turns into AJ Styles as an arrogant heel having to take on Shane McMahon at WrestleMania, not for the title, I'm not going to be happy with that. No. That's not that's going to suck. At least give AJ the opportunity to make it to the main event, have him in the match against Orton. Yeah. At least do that, if not make it a triple threat. But if you make it a triple threat, it just makes it convoluted. AJ doesn't play into the, the Orton-Wyatt story whatsoever. So it really just narratively doesn't make any sense to have AJ in the main event now. Zero sense. I mean, I guess maybe creative is sitting there thinking, yeah, no, we can have AJ and then we'll do AJ. Like you said, AJ versus Orton. But it's like, why would Orton have ever said he's not going to go to WrestleMania I know. anyways? That's I know. the thing that really bugs me. I know. It's like if he, they wanted that cool imagery of him surrendering to Bray, but between that and what happened tonight, there was what a week. And I don't think Orton was on SmackDown last week. And Orton week. wasn't on SmackDown last week. And so you had no story. You had uh, you had point A, you had point F, and you're missing B, C, D, and E. Yeah. Like, there was nothing in between there. What the, like, I get, okay, I get it. It's all kind of what we thought it was going to be. Randy Orton was playing along until he had an, op- an opportunity to, you know, he had the king's keys to the kingdom. What was that? Just like GPS coordinates to the Wyatt compound? Is that what it was? I guess so. We can't. I think, didn't we joke about that last week or two oh, weeks ago maybe. when he said he had the keys to the compound? And we we're like, oh yeah, now he gets to go hang the keys to the kingdom. He gets to hang out at the Wyatt compound. And what does he get there? He oh, he got full access to the fridge. You know, <laughs> like oh, get, me, me, and my puppy dog. You get access to the nap room. <laughs> Did you see, I must tweet this at you last night. I'm going to change the subject completely. Okay. Um, apparently, the Boston Red Sox in their, uh, at Fenway Park, they have a dedicated nap room for the oh, players. Oh, that's the best. And each player, if, if I remember correctly, has like a custom nap area. That sounds amazing. I, I would know. Only, I would only Tailored be Tailored specifically for each individual player. So back at the, back when I used to work at Washington Mutual, back when they existed before Chase took them over. And uh, it was when I did the graveyard uh, customer service on the phones. It was a fucking nightmare job. Um, actually, it wasn't that bad because we didn't get that many calls late at night. Um, but there was there was a nap room. I think people just made it into a nap room. I don't know. But like it was it, it was like you just go in there and like people just like it would be dark and people would be like laying in the corner. It 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 it, it, it was more like an opium den, <laughs> except without the opium. <laughs> people just milling them out. They're milling about in the nap room. Anyways, <laughs> I didn't. I never took a nap in the nap room. If I wanted a nap, I just fucking put my head down in my cubicle and sleep. Yeah. I did that a lot. Yeah. I one time I fell. I fell asleep. This happens. Sometimes. Did you fall asleep in the middle of a call? Yeah. <laughs> I was. I wasn't the only one who did that either. Because it always took time to pull up the account of hers. Okay. It's like you're sitting there, like, hi. Thank you for calling. This is Steve. How can I help you? Because it's fucking midnight. How long did you work right here? Oh, I don't know. Uh, shit. I was a, a, a two years, maybe. Oh, wow. Maybe it was less than that. Because I remember I started off like nine to five, and then I switched to like, what was it, midnight to eight or something? I don't know. So um, I did it for a few months, and I just couldn't take it because I, I couldn't get my sleep schedule. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was no schedule. There was no schedule. But, you know, I do remember, I do remember just sitting there. And going like this, and every once in a while, like I, I like you'd you'd see one of your coworkers sleeping, and then you'd look over at their thing, and they have a call on the line, like somebody's just waiting while the person's sleeping. <laughs> oh man, those were fun times. Oh man. Anyways, um, yeah. At one point, I thought Randy kind of alluded, and maybe it was just me. This is wish fulfillment on my part. Uh, alluded to the possibility of taking over the family. Because America, he said something. I he said to you, a lot, and I pointed to you, and I said. That's it. That's what. That's what's gonna happen. That might. That might be. That might be. I thought any second they, they they used a lot of negative space during his promo. Yeah. And I thought it was prime opportunity for, for Eric Rowan to bust in the door. Yeah. Or just to slide in from the side. Like yeah. Because he do just. In the pre-show. I think I read today that he just got cleared to. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Too. Yeah. So I mean, I'm guessing there's a good possibility that Bray will go to Luke Harper and ask for his help. I wouldn't be surprised. Sorry. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. Well, okay. Let's let's spin this into a positive. I feel like this might be a really good opportunity to add some depth to the Bray Wyatt character. Yes, absolutely. And him going to Harper and saying, hey, I need your help. I was in the wrong. Like having the God have to admit that he was wrong mm-hmm. is a very fascinating place for Bray Wyatt that we've never seen him in. Absolutely. So... 
if that's our third act, I'm all for it. And I hope that he re- retains the title. Yes. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see where the fans fall on this because they're so a uh, program to cheer for Randy. I know. And depends how sinister Randy continues to be. Yeah. I mean, he might be at the point right now where it's like, it's just useless. It's like, look, man, you're going to get face pops no matter what. Yeah. But I mean, that hasn't stopped them from trying it with AJ. I mean, you agree with me that what Randy did is that's heel tactics, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, he literally burned down a man's house and threatened to to desecrate the remains of his relative, mm-hmm. probably his sister. Mm-hmm. Well, literally, Sister Abigail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's dude. And I, combine I, what he did with his performance, I don't see how that could be interpreted as anything but a heel turn. Yeah, I, and I hope Randy Orton thinks that. I hope creative understands felt, felt yes. that this is a a heel turn. Yeah. for Randy Orton. Yeah. I just don't know if they understand, you know, it's like they, they're still trying to shove Roman Reigns down our throat. I'm not sure if they understand no people. I mean, look, I, I'll give them some respect for just trying to tell the story that they're trying to tell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I just, you know, you you never know. Like, sometimes it feels like they have the finger on the pulse and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're horribly, like, messing it up. Yeah. Um, I, You know, I'm intrigued. I just feel like I was ripped off by a couple of weeks of quality storytelling mm-hmm. where it gets to this point because mm-hmm. all of a sudden Randy Orton saying, and I hate, I hate, there's no more pedestrian term as an insult than screw you because it's not as offensive as fuck you. It's the PG 13. It's the PG version of fuck you. Mm-hmm. And so when you say, I said, if you can't beat him, join him. Another term I know is wait for the right time and screw them. That's a weak. That's a weak other phrase. I know. Like there could have been something. I will put it this way: given how eloquent Samoa Joe can talk, could you imagine if it was him doing the same thing? It would have been biblical. I know. It would have been Shakespearean. I know. It would have been fantastic. It would have been awesome. So, anyways, um, we'll see where it goes. Hey, look, it was it was a. I, I was always. Unlike Raw, I was glued to my TV screen. Yeah. You know, I liked it. I thought it was cool. It was just, I, I wish there was like a better build up to it. Cause I know. I'm like, okay, they're just, they're doing that. They're doing this now. I know. They're doing this now already. I know. So, I don't know. Um, Would you like to answer some questions? Yeah, sure. Why not? The glorious Steve Klein. Hey there, friend. Those long time listener and now first time patron. Thank you very much. Thank you, friend. What finisher do you think is underrated? You're our newest. Oh, popular. I am sorry. But go ahead. Um, for Steve, it is AJ Styles Springboard 450. What do you think? What finisher do you think is underrated? Uh, I don't know. Define underrated, I guess. Like difficult to pull off. No, underrated I, doesn't isn't as as effective as it should be. I don't know. Underrated finisher. I think you underrate the RKO. Oh yeah, t- totally for you sure. You do. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's just a diamond cutter. But it's done better. Like DDP, I was, I was a DDP <laughs> I, fan. I, I, I want to preface that. I know, I know. DDP had to get like a running start <laughs> to do the no. diamond cutter. What have I said time. before? He would walk up to a guy like this. Yeah. And then place it. No, I know. It's it's so funny because I, I think we've, we've made this point before. When you remember in your mind the diamond cutter, it's as cool as the RKO. Yes. When you watch it back. It's so slow and clunky. Every once in a while, there'd be a, a, a cool sequence Where, that yeah. would lead to it. Yeah, that would lead to it. But yeah. a lot of times, he would just he run would into telegraph it. the shit out of it. Yeah. It was great. The man with no wrists has a question for you, Larson. Oh, man, this is a tough one. If forced to choose, would you shave your beard or too sweet? So you better too sweet me if, if that's the choice. I'd shave my beard because it would grow back. Nobody want to get, can you stay off TV? Internet, I mean. It'll grow back in like two weeks. Can't for so two weeks for your vacation. No, I just I would I would just I would just do keep doing the show. Nobody wants to see that. Why not? You're not very handsome without your beard. You're a very dapper guy with your beard. Without your beard, you're kind of weird looking. A little weird. I don't know how to take that. I'd shave my beard. Face value. Complete face value. (laughs) I'd shave my beard. You are ugly without a beard. I'd shave my beard. But you have a beard. You have a beautiful beard. Mm -hmm. That's why you should keep it. Maybe I'll get one of those. uh, I'll say it this way. Those beanies have a beard attached to it. If I shave my head, which might be a necessity 10 years from now, hopefully 10 years from now, 
I am not a handsome man. I am ugly as shit. I don't know. I'm, I'm not even a handsome man in the first place. Well, shave my head. I have the weirdest square bald head. I don't think. I don't think as your head is not as weird as you think it is. It is. It's so weird. I'm fairly really certain not. my dad dropped me multiple times when my head was still malleable as a child. I was. I still had a moldable head. And See, he looking me. at your head right now, it looks perfectly fine. Mm, no, it's not, man. Trust me. I would never want to do this. Why? I'm going to do this. I'll shave my beard and I'll get, you know, please those, don't those beanies that has beard attached to it. It was weird. Like it's knitted to keep your face you, warm. I'd do that. that? So that way I'd that? still have the appearance of beard until my real beard grew back. So and weird. I'm not going to too sweet you. The door who beat up Goldberg. WWE gives you the seemingly impossible task of making the WWE universe care about Cena and Nikki versus Miz and Maurice. How would you book the story lean to WrestleMania and how would you ensure it's a good match? I I get the impression he uh, didn't watch that first promo. I know. Yeah, that was a very you good would start. Start there and continue along that path. Yeah, fat bastard, champ Alex Foster. I'm a fat bastard. I'm gonna scare you just like a hamburger. <laughs> Twinkie. Which wrestlers on SmackDown or on need to sing their own theme songs? Oh, that's great. It's Paperface says Baron Corbin. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> what is oh yeah, I don't know. Gonna make a lot of money I think, from this I think, match. I think Dolph should sing his theme song. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of sounds like he does already. I, I want Apollo Cruz to put lyrics to his theme song. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Empire Filth Ambassador Jason the Cabby, go ahead. Uh, firstly, I like to say it's not entirely accurate to say that the Empire hazes people. I, I think I put that in the in the YouTube link or the page. Oh, okay. Link. It's more like exposing them to a really gross way of I life. I don't need that to happen in our, in our no. chat, man. Now for the actual question. Harper and Tazawa easily have some of, if not the best facial expressions on the current roster. True. You can tell miles of story saying few words. Very true. That being said, who are some of your favorite storytellers that rely on their faces to say what words didn't. Oh, Stone Cold was the king. Oh, yeah, he was good. He was the king. The Rock was good, too. Yeah, oh, The Rock was great. Brian Pillman, he could tell a story mm-hmm. in his face. Um, Cena in the right moments can do a really good job. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel Bryan, a really good job. Uh, Shawn Michaels. I mean, Macho Man usually had fucking sunglasses on, and you could still, and a beard. Yeah. And you could still, his face was amazing. Hogan had a great face. HBK. Oh, yeah. HBK was good. El Ingobernable de Tejas, Adam Mayhem. Uh, so that Miz TV segment was amazing, mainly because they were allowed to say what everyone has in their minds and basically say, shoot from the hip. Now, with that premise in mind, why do you guys think the WWE doesn't allow more freedom to their talents and let them say what everyone and their moms already know. I think because it makes it more special. Yeah, when, when they, they do, do do it. Because otherwise, then then otherwise you just stray into like mean territory. I know. If it's know constantly I mean? a barrage of shoot comments. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, oh, I saw you eating too much at the at the buffet table, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> at the catering table, Victor. <laughs> hey, slamming gotch. Remember, you look like an idiot when you got a soda can stuck through your head, <laughs> through your head by Sin Cara. The other, oh yeah, it was that way. Uh, Empire Filth official creamer mm, no good. Jefferson. No good. Uh, I couldn't help but notice the amount of displeasure and hints of shooting this week with Big E and John Cena. There was Cena's Undertaker remark, and then his over-the-top Shawn Michaels-esque promo with Carmella and Ellsworth <laughs> later. <laughs> Is it me or is the roster obviously upset with the booking lately? Oh, I don't know. I think Cena seemed actually giddy. Yeah, Cena. I don't think Cena gives a fuck. I, I kind of like this turn in Cena's care. If he was like this more often, he just came out and said, "Well, the Cena, I feel, is on the verge of having rock levels of stroke in terms of like doing whatever man, he wants to." We know this guy sells a shitload of merch. He's proven factually to pop ratings, and he's got one foot out the door. We need to start letting him do whatever he wants. Yeah, I mean, Undertaker, I guess, was off the off the books, but I mean, because I don't know that did say, that sounded like fucking shoot. Mm-hmm. I really wanted my way. Mm-hmm. I'd be in here with Undertaker. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Man. Yeah, did. That, that's, there's there's something interesting in there. I don't know what it I is. No, very much so. Yeah, maybe that's just more of a shot across Nikki's bow. She's like, John, I'm retiring. Can I? Can't you have a match with me? You started out with a good Nikki and then just didn't work after that. Look at my boo-boos. <laughs> John. 
Uh, Jason White Jr. Hey, guys. Which segment in recent weeks was a better turn? The Festival of Friendship between Owens and Jericho or the segment we just saw where Randy turned on Bray? Fest- Festival of Friendship. Oh, yeah, man. Because he had two participants. Like, really? Like, it made sense. It was That, that was actually a really perfect buildup. Well, and also, all you... It was really that one shot of Owens talking to Triple H that made it yeah. made make perfect sense. Yeah, exactly. Without without that one shot, it might have been a, mm-hmm. a, a WTF moment. Mm-hmm. Might have had similar feelings about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Uh, let's see here. Alberto Del Taco. First time asking a question. I don't think that's... Oh, no. I guess I just read his name off the pledges. Uh, what do you think SmackDown should do with their tag division? Well, uh, Jefferson has a good idea. Delete. The Hardys, or the Revival, at least. Oh, I think he actually means delete them. Oh, okay. Look at how how, how entertaining SmackDown was without that shit tag division of theirs. It's real crap, dude. Oh, Their I know. Their tag division is garbage. I know, it's not very good. Here. Fashion place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, puke. Yeah. Ty Perez is next, Larson. Why don't you read it? Would it make sense to make 205 Live the first hour of Raw and they could cut Raw to the last two hours for the three-hour time slot? USA gets the three hours of programming that they want and we get a two-hour Raw. But the problem is WWE wants that hour of programming on their network. <laughs> Even though so they profit, shit. They profit 100% from it. And if USA saw like the numbers that the 205 Live gets on the network, they wouldn't want any piece of that at all. Yeah, probably not. I like that on SmackDown tonight they were advertising. Tonight on SmackDown, Neville addresses the WWE Universe. Oh, you mean like, on 205 Live, yeah. Yeah, on 205 Live. And I'm like, so he's just going to deliver a promo? <laughs> he's done that a couple times already. Rob Gutierrez, been watching some uh, some old in-your-house pay-per-views on the network. Right, good job, Rob. Well done. Yeah. I came across a really awesome match between HBK yeah, that match is great. and Mankind from In Your House man- Mind Games. Yeah, man. That's a great match. Do you have any favorite matches from obscure shows that don't get much fanfare? Oh, man. What a great question. I would really have to think about this because we've seen a lot. I know. Um, what about Mankind? Sorry. Mick Foley, Vader, Halloween Havoc 95. There you go. Uh, I don't know 90, how obscure that is. Oh, sorry, ninety three. Yeah. I don't know how obscure that is, but if it kind of is, nobody ever talks about it. I, I mean, know. sometimes I guess maybe when they reference Vader, but nobody ever talks about that. That was great. Yeah, it's a freaking death match in front of like. Oh, that was that was also hilarious during Randy's promo when he, <laughs> he takes out a pickaxe and you hear children screaming in the audience. That was awesome. Have you watched the uh, HBK Mankind match? That's what he's talking about? Not recently. I think I have seen it's it, good. though. Yeah. Um, the, Mankind and Triple H had a lot of good matches before Triple H was hot shit. Yeah. Um, like, when they first kind of were milling about the company, they had some really good matches. Um, trying to think. Was there any classics in WCW uh, Wild Thing? <laughs> I feel like there was. All right. Live sex show champion Weatherstein. What SmackDown superstar is guaranteed peed on? <laughs> Tom Phillips. <laughs> I've got a huge erection. <laughs> I want to face F you. <laughs> I'll get you. Uh, let's see here. Star, Stardew Valley number Didn't one. You didn't answer contender. the question, but that's fine. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't know, man. Eric Rowan, I guess. Okay. Apollo Crews after night. Uh, he needs a win. He does. Um, are there any championships? Oh, Stardew Valley number one contender, the un- Uncanny Iron Fish. Uh, are there any championships that you do not want certain wrestlers to hold? For example, he does not want Cena to hold the Intercontinental title because I don't want him to be a triple tri- a triple crown champion. I don't want Shinsuke Nakamura to hold any belt that isn't top belt, top belt, either universal or, or world title. I feel like he's above. Samoa Joe obviously is above. I don't want any of the SmackDown competitors in the tag division to have the SmackDown tag belts. Even American Alpha? Even American Alpha. I don't want any of them. Those belts should be vacated until a, an actual tag team <laughs> of quality shows up on SmackDown. And then Asuka shows up and she wins them and she just holds the SmackDown tag okay. titles. Here, let's do a few more questions. Uh, Randy. Vince has agreed to be roasted on Comedy Central in the roast of Vince McMahon. I like it. Who would you want to see on the panel to roast Vince? Mick Foley. Yes. Um, John Cena. Triple H. 
Edge and Christian because remember that bit yeah. that was so yeah. good. Triple H, yeah. Um, the Rock. I mean, that's lofty, but I'm saying if it can do anybody. Um, so, okay, no, I got it. Scott Steiner. <laughs> Okay. It would have to be Scott Steiner. Okay. It'd be so offensive. I know. It'd be great. Uh, let's see here. Do a couple more. Okay. Skylar Mars. As a, oh, this is a, the Martian. What was, it, what was his uh, warp driver? The warp driver. As a wrestler in training, I am curious. What are some things about wrestlers that make them your favorites? What a good question. And, and things that make a wrestler. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, well, he's a wrestler in training. He's yeah, trying yeah. to find out what, what are some things that make. A wrestler, your favorite wrestler. The ability to to tell a story that has a beginning, middle, and end. In the ring. In the ring. Which I I would think is the most difficult thing to do. Yeah. I mean, I think you can dedicate effort to learn the moves, mm -hmm. to be safe. Mm -hmm. But I think, yeah, connecting with the audience and telling a story through physical action. Yeah. That sounds like it'd be really tough. Yeah, absolutely. And conveying emotion in the ring. Mm -hmm. That seemed like it'd be a hard thing to do. Yeah. Uh, one more question, then we're going to do trivia. Smapty Jones, based on your top 10 from this weekend, which current WWE wrestlers would benefit from being released released, and thrive on the independents? Oh, we kind of answered that earlier. Oh, that's right. right. Um, what did we say? Cesaro, to a degree. Yeah. Um, I feel like there are some wrestlers who maybe. No, oh, Adam Mayhem asked it. Okay, like Dolph Ziggler, for example. I wonder. We've only ever seen him in the WWE. I wonder if there's more to his arsenal than we've seen. Yes, and we've just never been able to see it. I know. So that's that. That's sort of my answer. Here we'll do one more since one we already answered that yeah. one. Hidden Leaf Village champion Namakaze Minato okay. is Bray now broken. <laughs> what if Bray sought the the guidance of the broken heart? Oh, that'd be crazy. <laughs> that'd be so funny. Although that would be Bray straying into squirrely, goofy territory. Oh, I which know. Which is one thing we didn't want to have happen. I know. You know. You know how I. You know how that could work. You know how that could work. Is if. Is if is if Matt Hardy and I guess Jeff? How do I put this? I'm trying to think. I know there's a movie where I'm thinking about where a character is putting on an act, and then he's forced to live that act for reals. And I forget what I'm thinking about. I know there's probably some cheesy examples of it, but. If Matt Hardy had to drop the act, but still, I, I don't, I don't know, I, I don't, I don't know really where I'm going with this, but like, you know, he's sort of an old veteran at this mm -hmm. point who's seen it all, mm -hmm. and so for him to drop the act and keep it real, but not be cheesy Matt Hardy that we've seen before, not be cheesy heroic Matt Hardy, like yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. drop the mask of the broken thing, and say, you know, this is just a metaphor for for what's going on inside somehow. And yeah. Bray Wyatt, you need to find that and, and learn how to fix it. I don't know. I just need to be Heavy cool. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Heavy stuff. Exactly right here on Going In Raw. <laughs> Anyways, it's time for... Trivia. Oh, man, I got my receipt for New Japan World. Best 999 yen I've ever spent. Oh, mine should be forthcoming soon, too, then. Nice. All right, uh, I'll ask first. Okie doke. Who defeated Mr. McMahon in a no-holds-barred match at WrestleMania 22? 22 was the year after I was there. Hulk Hogan. Shawn Michaels. Oh, shit. Okay. I know that was when Vince was fighting everybody. Um, what rock star accompanied Jake the Snake to the ring at WrestleMania 3? Alice Cooper. Very good. Very good. True or false, Edge once defeated John Cena in less than two minutes. Sorry, dude. Get a new card. I already saw that question on a card. Did you see all of them? I just saw that one. Well, then, it's true. do you know the answer? It's true. You knew the answer regardless if you saw the question beforehand, right? I would have said true. I think when I looked at the question, I was like, that's got to be true. Why would they ask that? Okay, that's fine. Okay, fine. 
Um, name the tag team that the British Bulldogs defeated to score their first world tag titles. Heart Foundation. Um, no, uh, Brutus Beefcake and Greg Valentine. Oh. What? Well, no, no, sorry, no. Sorry, go ahead. Name the six superstars who were in the first ever Elimination Chamber match. Oh, fuck. Um... First ever. Eric Bischoff created it. <coughs> I'll say. Jericho, Angle, Lesnar, Guerrero, Benoit. You got one of them. <laughs> really? You got Jericho. Okay, who else? Uh, Michaels, Triple H, Van Dam, Kane, Jericho, and Booker T. Fucking A, dude. Okay, that was a hard one. That was tough. Um. <laughs> Put up a finger. What two words does Scott Hall say at the start of his interviews? Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Which WWE Hall of Famer trained Triple H? Oh, um, Killer Kwaski. Yep. What was the name of the ill-fated action figure line in which superstars were portrayed as commandos? Wow. Yeah, you're not going to get this one. I have no idea. Stomp. All with like periods, like an anagram. That's crazy. Uh, which is the oldest WWE championship? The oldest WWE championship? Yep. Okay, well, the WWE is 2009. I mean, the, I think the, at that point, the WWE Championship has the lineage for the original belt held by uh, Buddy Rogers. So that. The Women's Championship. <laughs> does that predate Buddy Rogers? I guess so. According to this card, it does. I think they bought that off of Moolah. I don't know. It's, it's, on, it's on the card. It's on the card. It's on the card. Moops. I'm totally fine. It's Moops. I'm totally moops. fine with it. <laughs> Undertaker defeated Hulk Hogan at what one night only WWE pay per view? Good luck with that. We're tied right now. We're tied. I have a feeling we're going to stay that way. I think we're going to stay that way. One time only, huh? Yeah. I vaguely remember this name. Vaguely. Undertaker won, right? You said? Uh, it was Undertaker, and if I'm not mistaken, that is apropos. And I'm not talking about his gimmick. I think. Hold on, before I before I say that as a hint, because I want you to get this. Uh, yeah, what I said stands as a clue. Great American Bash. Tuesday in Texas. Oh, shoot. (laughs) Because he's from. I know. I thought Taboo Tuesday. I know. I thought Taboo Tuesday, but I think they did that multiple times. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, So anyway, tied. tied, Nobody gets a bonus. No cards. What a bummer. No cards. Too bad I didn't know all six members. I know. Well, that was tough. Elimination Chamber. Or that the Women's Championship was the oldest one. Yeah, I thought about saying that. Hold on a second. I want to see something real quick. Well, I mean. WWE, WF. Women. Well, I just want to know if the women's championship predates the Buddy Rogers one. That's what I want to know. Uh, women's championship. Goes back to 1956. WWF championship. Uh, okay, whatever. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so 56 compared to 63. Okay. All right, so... There you go. The card. It's in the cards, Larson. Yep. Anyways, uh, I want to say thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.